Hey guys, how's it going? So I know in the last video we talked about dihedral angles and how that influences secondary structures such as alpha helices and beta sheets. But in this video, we're going to start talking about some of the functions and details about proteins and enzymes. You might have remembered that we mentioned enzymes very shortly when we were talking about chemical kinetics and how enzymes are a form of a catalyst, a biological catalyst that helps speed up biochemical reactions. These biological machines work with so much efficiency that in order to describe all of their features and their kinetics, we have to break down the basics of enzymes and how they interact with the ligands and substrates. So let's start off with talking about what a ligand is. A ligand is anything that enzyme or protein reacts with reversibly. So that means it can attach and detach. This is something that can be a molecule or even another protein. Whereas the substrate is a specific ligand, it's the ligand in which the enzyme acts upon. So for the example of hexokinase, glucose is the substrate because it's the ligand in which the enzyme complex acts upon to turn into glucose 6-phosphate. The cofactor is one or more inorganic ions that work with the enzyme to help with the reaction. So for example, magnesium here in hexokinase helps stabilize the negative charge coming from the phosphoryl groups in the ATP and glucose 6-phosphate. Describe a binding site on the enzyme as a specific spot on the enzyme that has amino acid residues with a specific size, shape, sequence, charge to match with a specific ligand. Now, ligands can either enhance or inhibit the enzyme performance. We have a specific binding site called the active site. The active site is where the substrate interacts with the enzyme. Now, active sites and binding sites are very specific for the ligand they interact with. For example, here we can see with glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate dehydrogenase, we actually have a deprotonated cysteine residue at the active site. Now, cysteine isn't normally deprotonated, but this is a product of glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate's environment, which influences in its reaction with G3P. One of the key factors that we mentioned about ligands is that they have a reversible relationship with the enzyme. So in future videos, we're going to explore this reversible relationship with matching it with what we learned about equilibrium. And this is what we call michaelis metten kinetics, and that's going to be for a later video. But for the rest of this video, let's explain how enzymes speed up biological reactions. You might have heard the general phrase that enzymes are able to speed up biological reactions by lowering the activation energy. And where that is true, enzymes do lower the activation energy that allows the chemical kinetics to happen a little faster. There's a little bit more details than just lowering the activation energy that goes behind enzymes and their ability to work so efficiently. You see, the specific amino acid residues at the active site of the enzyme allow reaction orientation to always be in the correct orientation throughout each of the reactions. Remember when we were talking about chemical kinetics and there wasn't always an issue at whether or not we'll have an effective or an ineffective collision? Well, because of the binding site, we always have an effective collision. This is one of the factors that speeds up the overall reaction. So we saw with the animation that the enzyme forms an enzyme substrate complex, an enzyme product complex, and then releases the product through that reversible interactions. But how do the interactions with the enzyme and substrate lower the activation energy? And that's what we're gonna talk about now. Now, there's two competing models to how enzymes react. Lock and key, as in the enzyme is the perfect fit for the substrate and induced fit. That means that the enzyme slightly changes to accommodate the incoming substrate. And we're gonna talk about one, why one is more beneficial for enzyme kinetics than the other. We had lock and key model, meaning that the substrate perfectly reacts with the binding site, then the enzyme substrate complex is gonna be lower in energy than the substrate. This is gonna increase the activation needed to create the product. So instead of active sites being perfect for the substrate, they're actually perfectly fitted for the transition state. This allows us to lower the activation, have beneficial binding energy, and allow the reaction to happen faster. 
because if we have perfect fit for the substrate, we're gonna make the enzyme substrate complex even more stable, which requires more activation energy. So we don't wanna create something that's even more stable than the substrate itself. I hope this short video introducing enzymes and how they work so efficiently to speed up biochemical reactions was helpful. In later videos, we're going to explore more of the kinetics and details behind these enzymes. Remember, all these infographics that I use throughout this video are for free download on my website. The link is in the description below. And I hope you guys have a great day.